Oh, thank you very much. I will try and speak English and I will try <laughs> to speak clearly. Um, the aim of my talk today is to share the experiences that enable the title Market Opportunities for Coal Ash Within Australian Agriculture. The scope of this talk is about marketing and it is a presentation of the Ash Development Association which is an association of ash suppliers and processes which develop the CCP as a resource in cement and cementitious opportunities. It comprises, the Ash Development Association is a, um, has a commitment to continuing um, CCP resource and also a com commitment for investing in agriculture. And there was a slide which identified that the um, Ash Development Association is comprised of a board and a national technical and education committee. And that is one of the reasons, that is the reason that I'm here speaking to you today. Because the company that I work for is a member company of the Ash Development Association. So this is about the Ash Development Association. And we have a board, a policy for agriculture. There is a laser thing if you want to use it. Yes, thank you. I'll be organised. Right, I come from Australia. Okay, so what we have with the Ash Development Association is that we have a, a, a mandate to ha uh, be an industry lead leader and um, the current market strategy for coal ash includes um, advocacy of our ashes. The Australian um, coal resources are located in approximately six coal resource basins. There are 31 power stations and um, this area is also located um, in the main agricultural areas and within that main agricultural area we have approximately 50 million hectares of soils which are acidic. And uh, those acidic soils are um, below pH 5.5, so they're the, er the areas in red. The production uh, is for, these are um, data for 2012. Our annual production was about, is about between 12 and 14 million tonnes per year. We sold in, um, for fly ash for example, we produced 11.3 million tonnes of fly ash. We sold 2.7. So we have 8.7 million tonnes available for agriculture. The rest of it is used, uh, we dig, dig out 2.2 million tonnes out of the ground. So, and most of that was used for quarrying and cement. The ADAA has a current strategy for marketing and that has three major components. Market identification, market development and advocacy and education. Of those, we have invested in applied research with two major um, projects. One was uh, PhD research uh, by a, um, a researcher called Panthen and the second one is work which is, um, I'm speaking of today, which was uh, funded to look at the general aspects of using fly ash in agriculture. In this, these two research programs, we identified four market segments, and those include um, some particular aspects associated with constraints to plant production. So the second part of the, the second work was by a researcher called Isa Yutza, and what they identified some um, key elements for using Australian fly ash, such as the application rate, the application method, and that second season benefits would ensure. Yutza also identified that benefits existed for carbon sequestration and th <coughs> building on the w previous work by American researchers. And 
Uh, the carbon sequestration is about the protection and enhancement of soil carbon in both indirect and direct um, methods. So in referring to this table, the, uh, the ADA, ADA research by USA highlights that existing market opportunities lie in the ability to ameliorate constraints to plant production. These cover soil salinity, acidity, um, soil acidity, sedicity, nutrient supply and minimi minimisation of nutrient loss, and amelioration of soil properties. In total, these aspects, if these were solved, they would add $3 billion to the each year to the Australian agricultural production sector. However, in 2012, the ADAA membership identified that we only allocated 600 tonnes of ash for agriculture, despite the strong um, research that we have. So Table 1 also identifies the role of legislation and ongoing materials assessment. And in this case, the work by USA identified that there were some major selective um, aspects, particularly soluble boron, electrical conductivity of the ashes, and also the major elements of lead, um, cadmium, and um, mercury. So, with regards to the selection of ashes, we have established legal certainty associated with the um, product and we have our environmental protection authorities have built on the work of UNSA uh, to, to, to suggest that we could select our ashes on the base of soluble boron and EC. But the exemption regulations don't really identify what we would apply to soil. And um, so what we need to do is start looking at the agronomic um, purposes. Your ISA also identified the levels for lead, cadmium and um, mercury. And our ashes um, have got high salinity in the brown coal uh, with chloride and sulphates. Our chemical compositions are predominant, this is um, from the power station where I work at, predominantly silicon dioxides and aluminium oxides. We don't really have much of anything in terms <coughs> of um, phosphorus, nitrogen or potassium. And so if we're looking at market aspects, we haven't, we can't, we're not going, we're, we're not replacement materials. But I identified that, that the class S F ashes would raise pH levels um, over extended times, that the, there was a combination of factors um, happening in the soil, that our phytotoxicity risk was low. We had low risk in terms of aluminium dissolution, and that the application rate would, would produce beneficial rates at 5 to 10 um, tonnes per hectare. So let's think about the benefits. The benefits in, in, in marketing um, are that you need to, um, so the hypothesis is that using our ashes over a, um, extended, so you have your second seasonal time your fly ashes and, and over time your plant responses and your conventional soil amendments reduce over time and with your fly ashes they increase. So this is some work that we did with regards to uh, silica. Now the reason why we tested silica is because that it's one of the major components in the um, ashes and also there are um, um, particular crops which, which require silica. So these are data associated with looking at um, the total, total elements, the 
plant available elements using an extraction method called uh, with um, melic solution and water water soluble me um, methods. And so these are for fly ash and furnace bottom ash. And our fly ash had soluble calcium, potassium, and magnesium. But our silicates were also plant available. So if we would do a calculation associated with a clay loam soil that really needed to have um, 58 um, tons of um, oh, kilograms, sorry, per hectare of silica, then we would only really need to apply a tenth of a ton. So the operating ranges, um, and that is to just get that soil up to up to a level. Um, so, th so that the potential operating ranges in five to ten tons per hectare are not not unrealistic. However, then what is really the point if you can't really add much to the soil? So, in terms of marketing, if we look at a market market situation analysis, we haven't got a price. We haven't got a, a, We've got high commercial risks, and what is our strategy? So the strategy was that we did, if you did a strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, so a SWOT analysis in terms of marketing, you would find that we would, our strength is that our CCP is a choice for the landholder and it's not a substitute. We've got well supported by well defined materials testing. Our Weakness, major weakness is that we have a lack of strong economic drivers and um, the other opportunity is that we can market an ethical product. So I've gone off the idea of sustainability, I suggest that we just go with ethical products. Um, and, uh, and that we haven't got, we're not going to impinge in the current markets for cement. But the threat to the whole system is that we still have to always um, prove that we have benefits because we're a classified waste. In terms of the, um, there are a couple of problems in <coughs> promoting a product to a customer. And you have a market where the buyers meet the sellers. So a couple of problems that we've identified are that how do you manage raw feed products? Um, a lot of the research and all of the research is done on run off station fly ashes and conventional soil incorporation techniques are not really suited as was mentioned previously. One, one of the interesting factors that ISA identified was that we need to ensoil, um, incorporate the ashes into the topsoil because that's where the benefits are. So in Australia, we're going more towards the um, conservation tillage methods. So when I talk to farmers, they say, well, we're not cultivating anymore. You know, that, that's not good. Um, so you end up that you've still got all your ashes and you still haven't got a mode of delivery. So that's a really important aspect that I think that needs to be developed. And there, so there are two market segments, both a soil blend and also the, the raw mixes. In terms of getting your market, we've got sites, regional, state and national variations in our product and developing um, and understanding does take time. So even we still haven't got a market. So um, it's really important that, that we focus on solving some of these problems because it's still going to take us 10 years to even get to the stage where we've got a, um, a product which we can sell to the farmers. So have we got a plan? Well, we do have a plan. Our plan is that we'll endorse our um, research pro uh, projects. We haven't really got any field sites in Australia, so um, we need to promote those as well. 
we need to promote our raw and um, blended products. And for the ADAA, we actually have to have our stakeholder members to be agricultural, from the agricultural sector, because that's how the ADAA managed to, um, to get the current cementitious industry off the ground. So for agriculture, we've got a proof of concept. We have, the ADAA has the tools to push the market so we can tell people that we have, we have um, a product and we also need to pull the market so we need to be able to give them the technical, the customers, the technical information and that is a major role of the ADAA. We need to, as generators, the power stations need to respond and actually say that they're going to supply the market for agriculture. And we also need to develop um, a product re recognition. And in the end, we need to establish economic viability. So in summary, for our Australian coal ash industry, we do have market opportunities. We can solve the problems of all Australian um, plant production. Our agricultural market is independent of current industry stakeholders. We've got 8 million tonnes able to be um, to draw from and the major thing is that we suggest that the CCPs are an alternate option for soil management. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much Jen. Uh, I think that it's very interesting to compare the situation in Israel where 90 plus percent of the college is going to construction, just a little bit left for agriculture, compared with the huge surpluses of college in Australia that uh, require a market. Um, Jen, you, in Australia you have problem of the Murray Darling water cycle. Salinity is a major, major problem. Does, is the sensitivity towards solving this problem, does this has an effect on developing the market for college? Are people more cautious in adding chemicals to soils because of this? Well, if we use my state as an example, the, there's really only two criteria for selection, which is your soluble boron and your EC values. And if there's another opportunity later on, I can show you that we do have a range of EC values. Um, and generally, our black coal is below four decisiemens per centimetre. Okay, any questions, comments? <coughs> Yes, I have a question uh, coming from the technologic uh, uh, side of this issue. You have mentioned that you are adding 125 kilos per acre. This is what you find the uh, feeding rate. Have you uh, produced uh, a system to do it, to define it, a feeding rate in the field, or still this is an issue that you have to solve? It's still an issue we have to solve. Yeah, the application rates uh, are, are experimentally derived, yes. Yeah. Because you have mentioned that it would be nice to make a plant uh, producing soil. Yes, yeah. But I still believe that the m mode of application is one of the biggest hurdles. Uh, so two hands, a quick question please. Uh, Jane, I had a question in relation to Western Australia. Um, I know that there's activities to create alkalone, uh, which is a product uh, developed from red mud. Um, do you expect a competition there to market fly uh, ash relative to red mud as an alternative uh, material to uh, neutralize your acidic soils in that area? Oh. Yes, most likely because they have that their industry is larger than ours. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, last question, please. Uh, Bob Reamers, uh, isn't it 
Isn't there enviro processes in Australia right now? I think there are <coughs> enviro plants in Australia. I For sludge. For sludge, yes. Yeah. yeah. So could not you be dealing dealing with them? We could. And we need to recruit them as a member of the Ash Development Association. Yeah. That's the key. We're, sp we're speaking to ourselves. We're not speaking to the market. And um, we can, <coughs> our market is fertiliser companies, and our market are our agricultural landholders. Our market is the, um, the person who um, produces biosolids. Uh, we, but we don't, we're not having the conversations. And neither are the power stations. Jane, what are the primary objections that the market raises? What are the concerns? Uh, just on a general basis, they always say fly ash hasn't got a lot of heavy metals. So it's a perception of yes. heavy metal loadings. Yeah. And stigma associated with it. Yes, there's that. And they also say, oh, fly ash. You can use that for, uh, can I get, get that for, um, for, get some lime? So I can't offer that. <laughs> I can't offer lime. <laughs> I can only offer, offer a good process in the soil. Do you have scrubbers in your facilities? No, we don't. So you don't have uh, materials? No, no. So particular sources would have to, would, um, would have to choose.